Hello, my name is Jakob. I would like to present the project on estimation of stereophonic source panning parameters. I work in the audio analysis lab at Aalborg University, where this project has been carried out and is a project uh, in progress. I'll give you an introduction to the problem, I'll explain the signal model, some proposed method, experimental results, and lastly a conclusion on that. So why do we estimate stereophonic panning parameters? It's because uh, improvements have been shown in research on multiple fundamental frequency estimation as shown in reference 1 and 2 here in the bottom. Also improvements for source separation and signal enhancements among uh, others are possible. Stereophonic mixtures is something we observe, uh, for example, uh, in TV broadcasts, in radio broadcasts, etc. Therefore it's a very widely used format. So we propose to find the number of sources and the stereophonic panning parameters related to the sources. So what is a source? If we, if we look at the figure here for a stereophonic configuration, we have a left speaker and a right speaker and one source in this example called virtual source which can move on an arc from the left and the, to the right speaker and vice versa. So phi k is the angle to the virtual source when the listener is observing the x, uh, is facing the x-axis. We model the mixture ym in channel m at time instance n as the sum of k attenuated and delayed sources. The attenuation gain ratio is called gamma for the k source in the m channel. The source is called sk and the delay is delta for the k source in the m channel in samples. The gain ratio here, gamma mk, is based on trigonometric functions because the trigonometric functions has the quality of giving us a constant distance to the virtual source from the listening position. N, capital N here, can be defined as a segment of the full recording. For music, it's very often uh, we have used 600 milliseconds and it's possible to use large frame sizes compared to, for example, speech, which is very often smaller frames. For each signal segment, the observation x is shown in equation 2. This is the interaural level and time differences. It's computed from the Fourier transform capital Y of each channel, so it's a ratio between these, which gives us gamma, an estimate of gamma called gamma hat and tau hat. This is a function of frequency in the DFT. So x is a two every observation of x is a two-dimensional vector. The narrowband assumption limits the maximum frequency and the maximum delay that we have applied in the experiments. And also the assumption of W disjointness is shown here. This is a very widely used assumption, which basically says that source K and source I does not have spectral overlap. Since this is not the case amongst the other assumptions also violated, we see here the distribution of X is a... In this example we have three sources and we can see that these are not point-wise estimates. What we can do with this, and what we also have done in the experiments, is to apply a threshold. In equation 3 we see uh, the indicator function b of w, which is basically a threshold set related to the signal power. This gives us a com much faster computationally algorithm and also removes part of the noise floor. So how is the number of sources and their panning parameters estimated? We proposed the method at ICASP 2018 in Canada which is a method based on clustering of, in, of the observed interaural level and time differences. We use the generalized variance and the posterior membership for selecting clusters across all segments. We parameterize the observations as an unconditional distribution model shown in equation 4. It's a probabilistic model uh, of finite mixtures, namely a Gaussian mixture model. Theta is the parameter vector, 
where we have the parameters alpha, which is the mixing probability, which means it's the probability of having the class K. Mu is the mean, which is directly related to the panning parameters that we want to estimate here. And C is the covariance matrix estimate. We assume in the full recording that the stationary panning parameters, which means that if we have, for example, in a music mixture, a drum set, which is in mono, and we have panned that to stereo, to some position, we assume that position to be fixed through the full recording. Once that is done, we observe uh, IID samples, independent, identically distributed, where Xi is one observation in equation 2 of the i signal segment, and the log likelihood function is then shown in equation 5. Such parameters are estimated as the maximum likelihood, and, uh, and the GMM is implemented as an EM algorithm. One of the qualities of the Gaussian mixture model is that it can model arbitrary distributions as a combination of components. So therefore, it's very prone to overfitting. A widely used method for solving overfitting is the MAP estimator, the maximum a posterior estimator. In such an estimator, there's a, there's a penalty term on the prior of the parameters. One example of this is shown in the figure, the Bayesian information criterion, as a function of the number of sources. Each graph and each color represents a different restriction on the covariance matrix. What we see here is a monotonous function for every uh, restriction that we have, and there is no peak that we cannot minimize that this estimator or this uh, cost criteria. Therefore, some of the challenges are summarized here. The, does not necessarily exist a unique definition of a true cluster. You might see something, I might see something else if we look at some distribution space. The assumption of normality does not exactly hold, and also the W disjointness is violated even for speech as shown in a reference by Scott Rickard, reference number four. The GMM can model any distribution as a combination of components. And if we look at this figure, the black ellipsoid shows the, this overfitting quality. This is the MMDL method of reference number five, and we have 10 black ellipsoids describing a mixture of three components. Therefore, we propose to overfit on purpose and then locate the clusters from the candidate set. We find the number of sources in the set indexed by S from one to capital S. And the estimated parameters theta S is ranked such that beta 1 is smaller than beta 2 up to capital beta S, beta capital S. And beta is chosen to be the generalized variance. The generalized variance is, is computed as determinant of the covariance matrix. And after we have ranked the parameters, we compute the posterior probability of xw belonging to uh, component S, which is shown in equation 8 as zeta. Here, we can see that the first column is related to the S component, the first component, and the second column to the next component, and each row in zeta is related to frequency. If you go forward uh, in S from 1 to capital S and check for unique observations, we can then uh, use that for finding the number of components. So in this example, I've shown some numbers. A unique uh, assignment is rather is a column of only zero and ones. So it means if there's a one, that observation has been assigned to that specific component with 100% probability. In this example, we can see there are two clusters because in the third column, we have a number between zero and one, which means that this specific observation is assigned to zero clusters. Therefore, we choose the first two columns as the first two clusters, the only two clusters. This can also be described as shown in the bottom here. There's no need to go into detail with that. This is uh, how we can find the number of sources in the three source examples showed previously, where our method has been applied, and which is shown in color here. 
as a Gaussian mixture model. Here's the experimental result on the ranking of the Gaussian mixture components. This is a comparison between alpha, the mixing probability, and beta, the generalized variance. For each iteration, k is 4, which means we have 4 sources. We can see a great improvement uh, in this case from 0.2% to 99% in, in this, approximately in this case. Which means that after ranking with the generalized variance, we will have the first, uh, we have located the clusters as the first sources. The pending parameter estimation results are shown in the table here. On the EBU SQM CD in 1000 iterations, we have set a mixture randomly two up to five sources has been randomly mixed together and we apply our method and have a precision rate of 93% and a recall rate of 88%. That was the last experimental result and now I'll conclude on the ICAS proposal. We have proposed a blind source panning estimation method which determines the number of sources as shown from the precision and recall rates based on the generalized variance and the posterior probability of the assignments. The parameters distribution is modeled as a Gaussian mixture and the method was based on clustering of interval level and time differences and we showed promise in performance in the experiments where we used the EBU SQAM and the Iowa dataset and which contains an echoic and also various music ensemble samples. Thank you for listening. And please feel free to contact me on email if you want. So additional t additionally to this, there's a source separation example, which is an extension of the ICAS proposal. We propose to take the statistics that we have obtained from our method, where, with, where we have estimated the number of sources and the panning parameters. So we take these GMM components and fit them to every frame of a short-time Fourier transform. So we compute a short-term Fourier transform, and for every frame, we re-estimate alpha and C. Then the zeta is a soft mask for each frame in that short-term Fourier transform to uh, map out the different frequency components of the signal, and then run an inverse short-term Fourier transform. And that will give us the K-estimated stereo sources. So it'll give us, if we have four sources, it'll give us four stereo tracks. So I want to show that in a, as a proof of concept um, audible example where we uh, compare to state-of-the-art algorithm shown in reference number 7 in the bottom here by Alex Osirov and Cedric Fivot. We have an observed mixture containing drum, bass, vocal and other track, which is everything else than drum, bass and vocal. These four tracks was mono and has been... Uh, and to these tracks we have applied our panning model showed here with only amplitude panning and no delays, to be fair to state of the art. Here is the observed mixture playback. Okay, and here's the results. Everything to the left is the state-of-the-art NMF method, and everything to the right is our proposed GMM method. All the graphs here, they show the blind source separation evaluation metrics, the signal-to-distortion rate SDR, the signal-to-artifacts ratio, the SIR, and the ISR. Every color for the graphs is shown in blue is a bass, every red graph is drums, every purple is vocal, and every yellow graph is everything else, which is the track called Other. The general trend in the graphs is that our, in this case, on the track called Angel, Angels in Amplifiers, I'm all right, our method performs better. Let's listen to the results. Here's the drums. I'll first play back the state of the art and then GMM.
And then now method. So it's quite easy to hear that uh, what we can hear here is that our method has more emphasis on the high frequency content and a more continuous uh, sound to it. That's my interpretation. Also, the, the bass drum is better in the NMF method than in ours. And there's a lot, uh, there's more emphasis on the attack but only, namely, on the attack. And that's also what we can see in the graphs here. Let's listen to the bass, which has the same qualities from my interpretation. So it's quite clear that uh, the NMF method has uh, more bleed on the bass. Uh, yeah, that's very clear. Let's listen to the track called Other. <laughs> So the GMM method uh, just sounds much more high frequency smooth and uh, still you can hear that what was missing from for example the bass drum in the, in the, in the drum track was maybe bled into uh, this specific track. Let's lastly listen to the vocals before we end the presentation. I'm alright, feel away from you, and I'll be fine. Cleaning up the corner, put it back in order But no, I will always have this too A little piece of you I'm alright Feel away from you And I'll be fine Cleaning up the corner, put it back in order But no, I will always have this too A little piece of you That ends the presentation for today, and uh, thank you very much for listening, and please feel free to contact me. You can find my email on Albi Investi's webpage, if you wish. Thank you.